uh, if you're not. So you can go to momilis.com and download it. And today we're going to make a simple game. This is a very simple tutorial about basic gaming, basic game creation in the studio. Um, let's see it. First game will be something like that. We'll have a chicken, it will run across the, across the screen, and it can jump and do whatever it wants to do. Okay, so let's get started. First up, open a studio. I just want to mention that um, some of you are already familiar with the basics of the studio or even advanced features. But I'm sure that although you'll know most of the things I'm going to talk about, you you, sh you will find some new tricks and tips in our project. So let's create a new project. Let's let's call it C Chicken. So our project will be in a folder, and some of you know that we previously had a different a different system, but now the project is contained in a folder. Um okay, let's open it. Okay, that's what if you want to create a, a new project and you say yes. And in a few seconds we have our open project. So a few words about the studio. This is the welcome screen. It can be closed, but it shows important information and updates from us at Communities to you the developers. Right now we have a contest. Some of you have heard of it. We have actually a hundred thousand dollars worth in prizes. So, join the contest. You can win a lot of money. All right. So that's the studio. Studio. It consists of several panes and a work area. Here is the object tree. We will uh, discuss this later. Uh, we have the ribbon, the main ribbon with the main controls, the global variables, the properties window, and then. Uh, that's about it. This is not important right now. We will be covering this tutorial. So, sprites. What are sprites? Sprites are the most basic object, game object. It's anything graphical which moves across the screen and does whatever gaming function it has to do. Um, our first project, our first sprite will be uh, our hero. Let's call it uh, chicken. So we have a new sprite. It has no animations, no graphics, no nothing associated with it. And uh, the first thing that we want to create is some graphics. Okay. So let's hatch our sprite. Okay. We want to edit it, and uh, here we choose the resources. In the resources we define any graphics or animations we want to add to, to a sprite, any sounds. In this tutorial we will not uh, use any sounds, but uh, we'll use uh, only graphic uh, animations. So the new animation will be uh, standing. We want to create a standing chicken. So we added a new one. We have no images associated with it. And uh, let's change that. So we have an image. This is our standing sprite. We like it. We will add it to our frame sequence. Uh, it, it, it asks us if we want to, uh, to resize our sprite based on this image. We tell it to do because the image is the ideal size. And let's see. And then there it is. All right. So we have a standing chicken, a static standing chicken. Now we want to see our chicken in in our game. So. This is the rooms uh, pane. You can see any rooms we have in our game. A room is, is basically a level, except for the first one, which is the main menu. Uh, the main menu, the main menu is uh, is a special room. We will we can change that. We can customize it however we want to. But uh, in this tutorial, we will not use uh, any custom menus. So let's open our first level, room number one and change our resolution to landscape mode. That's it. Here you can see that we can first zoom in and zoom out. And we have a virtual frame which 
tells us how uh, the device will show a room and the area inside the device of course will be shown and the other and the area outside will not be shown. Let's add our sprite our chicken to our room. This is as simple as dragging it across and adding it to our room. Okay, let's see what we have here. We can just click the play button and this is the simple menu. Say okay and that's our static chicken just standing there. Let's make our chicken do something a bit more interesting. Let's make it walk. To we'll make it walk, just return to our resources. And add a new one. Walking. Walking. All right. New animation. New animation. Static animation. Fix the pin. Fix the pin. Second. Second. As you can see, it's really, really easy. To just add. Add. New animation. New animation. Alright, so, so here are the frame sequences. We have, see that we have in six frames in the animation. It's slowly. So we can change. It's moving a bit slowly. Frame. So we can change the time between frames. Let's say a Okay, so we have chicken. Okay, so we have a chicken in standing mode and walking mode. No. But we know standing, but we want the chicken is standing, but we want to make it. How do we how do we do that? We just tell it to change the it to change yeah. when it's created. The animation that's created. created. For that, we use the logic. The logic, the logic set of two main consisted of two the main entities. The other First are is the events, and the other are actions, which will be listed in this. Events are any interesting occurrence. Events are any interesting no. occurrence that is happening right now in the game. It's been created. Let's say a sprite has been created. A sprite has been destroyed. Exiting the screen, uh, or a sprite is exiting the screen, or some maybe uh, the, the someone touched the, uh, the, the game screen. First event will be a created event. First event will be a created event. Here we created the so event. Here we created the, the event. This and action, this, this any action, this any here, from this and any action from this list will be this once the will event. take place once the first screen. So the first thing we want to create animation. is a change in animation. Now we have a nice like, so object. Now we have a nice dialog. Which <laughs> Who's the, who, 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 whose animation we want to change? It's ourselves. Sprite. We created Sprite. Just choose. And, and we just choose the, the, the new animation we want to change, which is... Okay, so now when the Sprite will be... Okay, so now when the Sprite will be... The event will be invoked. The event will be invoked. Action. And then change animation action. And we perform. It's fine. happening in very fine. We have walking chicken. We have walking chicken. Walking anywhere. really walking anywhere because it's not really moving. Just looks like it's working. looks like it's working. So, so let's spin. So let's just set, speed. Set, just set. set speed action. Set speed action. Direction. Have a direction. Direction you want. Choose whatever direction you want. And, and, and choose you can choose what how fast you want to go. Fast you want to go. Speed is measured. Speed is measured in pixels per second. So the hundred pixels per second seems like a nice spin. Looks. Let's see how it looks. Great. Great. Move the screen. Move across the screen. And exit the For those of us of you that have a slow internet connection, again. Say it again. Smoothly. The next thing we want to do is make the chicken stop at the end of the screen. For that, we use a position event in both. I know there is a change in position, and then we find interesting. So before our object leaves the screen, right? We want some things done. The first thing we want to do is stop it. So its speed will be. Next thing, next thing is animation. Add the new change animation. We just now their game is walking and running away. Running away. 
when it reaches the end, stops and stays with you. Okay. No background, no graphic, just a chicken on a white screen. Let's change that. In the room and door, we have the designer in which we add the sprites and do whatever we want with the game objects. And we can, we can change the background of our room. Let's add a nice background. Let's say this one. Just select it and add it to our room. We select the static option to make the image independent from the room size and display correctly on any device. Let's see our changes now. Great. We have a chicken which is walking in a nice painted landscape. Let's just move, move the chicken a bit lower on the screen so we can see it. Great. So now we have the chicken. We have the background, and we want to make the game a bit more uh, challenging, let's say. So for that, we want to add some platforming. We add a sprite, let's call it platform. And this will be the basic platform on which our sprite will walk. We add a new animation, it's a static animation, so it only has a one image. Let's call it ground. Let's add a new image, round, that seems fine, this doesn't matter because it's only one image, and OK. So we now have two sprites, chicken and a platform. Let's add some platforms to our game. Let's that way. As you can see, I can add more than one instance of a platform to a game. Actually, I can add as many as I want. Game objects are not unique. They're simply definitions of things we want to have in our game. So we may have more than one chicken, more than one platform, more than one anything. In our case, we only want one chicken and as many platforms as we want. The goal in this game is to avoid the pit in the middle and just jump over it when the time comes. Now, I want to explain an important new idea which is um, called capability. For those of you who know a bit about programming, capability is, about, is a lot like inheritance in objects. For those of you who don't program, uh, I'll explain. A capability is um, is the definition of several traits which we want to, to have uh, in several objects. Let's say we want to have several, kind of, several kinds of platforms and so we add a platform capability and make each uh, platform inherit this capability. A capability can have many properties, many actions, events defined and each object with each sprite which will inherit this capability will have these uh, actions and events and animations defined in P automatically. Let's say we have a new capability called C floor and make the platform type of floor. So now our capability is floor. The platform is the type of floor. We can have another platform with different graphics and will behave the same as this one because they are both floors. So now, nothing has changed. You can see that our game is still playing and running and everything is fine. Now, let's add a bit of a bit interest. We want to make the, our chicken jump. How do we do that? When the game is screen is touched, by touch event, we just want to have the chicken go upwards. For this, we just set its speed to go up very fast. 
We also want it to fall down to the ground. Using actually a spin going up has a negative value because the y values are going down. The positive y axis is going down. So let's see it happening. Let's see. Going and now it's just falling down the bottom of the screen. We don't want that. So we now add collision. I will show you the game for those of you who missed it. We have a sprite running, everything's fine, we touch, touch the screen, it jumps, but it doesn't really recognize the platform and so it falls down. So I want to identify that. For this we have collision events. A collision event occurs whenever a sprite of a different, of some kind, collides with uh, another sprite which we want to Let's say when, whenever our chicken collides with the floor, we want something to happen. We always choose the bounding box level because it's the most efficient. And now we have our action. Let's say that when we have a spine, we want to, when we have a collision with our floor, we want to set our acceleration to zero. We don't want to fall anymore. And also our speed, because after all our speed is set, not this one. But I want to uh, explain the difference between set speed and set speed x, y. Set speed means that we overwrite both values, both x and y values of our speed. Set speed x, y lets us choose what axis we want to, uh, to change. So now we just change the y axis. Let's see it happening. And, as you can see, we hit the platform, and our sprite just stuck. For those of you who missed it, let's see it again. There we are. And for those of you skeptics who won't believe me, that the sprite will fall down when it doesn't hit a platform, see, it fell down. Okay, so our game is actually nearly finished. Let's just add a winning screen and uh, a game over screen if we fell down. So, another position event. When our sprite exits the bottom of the screen, we want to, let's say, Go back to room number zero, which is, of course, our main menu. Let's see. Oh. Sorry. Let's add a new, a new sprite. Let's call it uh, game over. Let's add simple animation. Actually, let's use the canvas item. Canvas item is a basic shape which we draw upon the screen. Let's say a rectangle. We just draw a simple rectangle and we want to say game over in it. So let's add a text frame and say game over. Very simple, very basic. It gets, it done, gets the job done. So whenever a chicken leaves the bottom of the screen, we want to create a new sprite. Sorry, we have to create a new sprite of type. Game over. And just set its position. Let's say fifty fifty. So when you fall down, it 
we have a name of a message, and we need to start over. We want also to add a success message, or maybe go back to main menu. So when the before the object leaves the right side of the screen, just want it to have. Change room, change room, room number zero, and we turn to main menu so we can replay our game. That's it. Start the game. And okay, thank you, sir. So I think I think my takeaway and. You know, from the work that I had with the studio, and also from this uh, specific webinar, is that the studio really allows you to experiment uh, in your game very fast and create your gameplay. And so, in the contest and generally when you create a game, the first step that you have to take is to create the core gameplay. So, what we do right now is just a little bit uh, improvisation. Uh, we will just take a uh, a blank project, and now we start adding some, uh, um, let's say, objects and motion into it step by step, so we can pretty much get a, let's say, a view into our developer's mind and see how we start create start creating game. So let's uh, just secure the the project. Just simply new project, we don't want to save, let's save it, okay, so we save our project, and let's, I would call it the experiment, okay, thank you, it's now an experiment, cool, so we have a blank new project, okay, so let's say that I want to experiment a little bit with the studio and create my own game, so I don't have the core gameplay yet, but I do know that I want to um, do something that will uh, use what, what I like best about mobile devices, and this is the touch interface. So I'm just going to open the first room. By the way, I never use the custom main menu. I hate the custom main menu, and if you're looking to win the contest, shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't uh, use the custom main menu as well, but we're going to skip to the first room. Uh, so what I want to do right now is to start, I would create a simple painting uh, program. So as if you can, I would like uh, to create uh, a behavior in which wherever I touch the screen with my finger, it will create a circle. So we can, I think we can use the canvas item in order to create a circle yeah. and then just create a new sprite. Let's call it our circle. Go to its canvas and just add a simple, let's say, orange with a black contour circle. That's amazing. That's, that is exactly the card I would select myself. Okay, so now we have a circle. Okay, so now, um, now we need to create a circle. So the thing is that I want to be able to create the circles without even one circle being created. So for that we have a new component we call controller in the studio. So I think a few words about the controller. Yeah, a controller is basically an invisible game object which just runs everything behind the scenes. Let's say we have uh, scores. We want uh, our game to, to keep track of scores, we want it to check for several conditions, and we don't want this logic to be in any of our game objects. We just want a score manager object which will handle everything for us. Investigate the game, know what's happening, and just uh, take care of its area of expertise. So let's make a painting controller. Let's call it Painter. So it's a, it's a controller. As you can see, it only has logic and properties. Uh, a word about, about properties. Properties are like variables. Each instance of a controller or a capability of a sprite have, can have several properties. Property is simply uh, something which is, let's say, unique to this uh, object. Uh, let's call it ID. In case we have several properties, we can just 
use this ID to uh, identify the different controllers which are currently living in our field. Let's start with one and we can have whatever we want. So, we have a painter. Let's add it to our room. Just drag the painter and then we have a small list of controllers in the bottom. Remember that controllers are invisible. They're not really a game object you can interact with only by luck. By the way, a good practice is to add a subdate to call the controller by what it does. And so as you see here, the controller is called painter because you're going to use it to paint. And most of the time we call the controllers game managers because we use them to manage the game, the scene, uh, the enemies. Basically, they are like, I would say, the god of the game. They control everything in the surrounding. I'm sorry for the noise. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's start uh, programming the, the controller. So we want to go to the controller right now and add possibly a touch event. That's the most logical. So you can only touch the screen and not the game object because there is no game object to touch, it's the controller. So when we uh, move, we want to do stuff. And the stuff we want to do is create an instance of our circle. Right. So we have a circle and now we want to define a bit of special logic. abilities for a bit of logic for our circle. Yeah, so the thing is that if you just create a, uh, a sprite and you don't insert any action into the um, uh, into the those computer to this composite action, it will just create the, the the circle in the upper left corner of the screen. That's it. Right? Okay. Let's That's see. It. So we just have a circle zero zero. That's its position. We want the, the circle to be created wherever we click. So, let's have a new action and let's set its position. We have indicators, which are special variables which, are, which exist all the time and have values which correspond to our, to our event. In the, script, in the touch event, we have the touch x and touch y values. Cool. Okay, so just, position. Uh, so just before uh, starting the simulator again, can you make the, the item just a bit smaller than it is right now, maybe 25%? Of course. We go to our canvas and just say, change our canvas size to 40 Okay. You okay, can also good. change by percent if you want to. Let's say half of current size. Cool. Yeah, that's a great size. So let's uh, open the simulator and see what we have. Oh, so it's really nice. Yeah, you can just paint on um, as many circles as you want. Let me try. Okay, so this is really a simple uh, drawing uh, painting uh, software right now. It's uh, I mean, you can pretty much do everything you want. Uh, let's say that uh, you can be very creative or very not creative and just write your name. Let's say Yal, if you haven't noticed. I have an idea. Let's create uh, two types of circles, a black one and a uh, an orange one. Okay, okay, let's do that. So we let's add a new circle, new sprite. Let's call it black circle. And in the canvas we will find a black circle. It's a bit too big, so let's 20 by 20. So we have a nice black circle. We want also to change the type of circle we want. So let's add a property to our controller and state the type of circle we want to draw. Let's call it circle. Whenever it's zero, we draw uh, an orange circle, and whenever it's one, we draw a black circle. So, what we want to do is alternate between the black circles and the orange circles. For that, we use our logic. 
So now we add an if action. As you can see, the create action and the if action are composite actions. It means that they contain several actions inside of them, which in turn may contain even more actions. Let's say an if within an if. So if self, which is our controller, circle type equals mind the double uh, equal signs, not, not just a single one. It's not valid, but it has to make a double equal sign. If we have uh, the orange type, we want to create, as you can see, I can move it. We want to create a type of R circle. Let's change its name to be orange circle. And as you can see, what's nice about the studio, you don't have to rename everything. Everything changes seamlessly. All right. So we have a new orange circle. And to alternate after our creation, after the circle is created, we want to set our property What we've done here is just the remainder of the division by 2. So if it's 0, it will become 1. And if it's, if it's 1, it will become 0. We assign it to the circle type. And just take it out of the condition. So, so if the circle type is 0, we create a new instance of our circle. And if not, let's say whatever other condition we have, an else condition, mind that an else may only occur after an if, directly after an if, not anywhere else. We just want to create a new instance of our Let's set its position in the same way. X, touch, Y. Let's see our new game. You can see one is black and one is orange. We cannot, we are having a hard time controlling it because uh, the touch is, uh, is sequential. But as you can see, one is created in black, one is orange. We can do it really fast. I think we can see uh, now yes, how it's created. So it's actually, it is one by one. If you move your finger really fast, you can see that it creates first the orange one, and then the black one. So what, what I would like to do right now is add some motion into the game. So instead of just statically creating sprites, I think we can use some uh, random uh, speed in order to give the, the different uh, circles. So let's uh, do that. Let's make the orange ones move slowly and the black ones move a bit faster. Okay. So when an orange circle is created, we want to set its speed. Let's say, no, we want to have an x, y because we want to change our uh, value. So let's say we have a random function which simply takes a, a range and just gives you a number between 0 and that number. Yeah, but I think I mean, we would like to have all the different um, uh, different circles moving the same uh, size of the speed. Oh, okay. So maybe we can randomize the angle okay. and then use some uh, trigonometry in order to set the... Sure. So let's let's have another... I would add the parameter that is called angle to the, to the circle. Oh, okay. And uh, then set the value of the angle and then calculate what should be the speed itself. Okay. If you want to, you can have a capability which is called circle. It's an excellent idea. Okay. And the capability will have a property called angle, angle of movement. In order to understand our games perfectly, we want to use the best variable names we can and just avoid any discrepancies and discrepancies later. And we can also have another parameter called um, size of speed. Right. 
All right, so we have uh, let's just keep convention. Okay. So we have a speed size and angle of movement. Right now, we want to make both our circles know that they're circles and they have these properties we just defined. So we go to the properties and say add capability. We have the circle capability available, and as you can see, these properties were added automatically to our sprites. So right now, we can actually set the default uh, size of the speed. So if you want, for instance, the orange circles to move in a different speed than the black ones, we can change the value of the default uh, Let's uh, value. Yeah, let's, let's make the orange circle go to the speed of, let's say, 80? Yeah, 50. Okay, okay, cool. It is 80 miles per hour. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Miles per hour. And if we want, and let's make the black circle move in a speed a bit faster, let's say 100. Yeah. And when each of them is created, the capability will take, of it, take care of it instead of duplicating the logic. When any of them are created, we just set our speed, set the angle to an oh, okay. so speed too. So you can see speed size on both directions, let's say, and move diagonally. Let's make this a bit interesting. Um, like that. And let's set Let's see. As you can see, the black circles are moving way faster than our own circles, and we didn't have to define a logic twice, only use a capability which consolidated the logic for both of us. By the way, what goes uh, to my mind right now is that, you know, that's really cool. We can create a painting software, but it can also be more um, interactive. Yeah, gamey. So, you know, as you draw what you want to draw, it also moves on the screen. And I have to say, you know, we, this part of the webinar is not planned. So all the ideas that you get get out of uh, um, developing and starting developing a game. We call it uh, develop, uh, uh, designing by uh, designing to developing. So as you can see, when we create a sprite, we just first of all we just select a random angle. Now let's make the our sprite move in that. So, this will be our x is the cosine of the angle times our speed. And the y speed is quite the same, only using the sine function. Okay, so this is, you have to know a bit of uh, uh, geometry in order to ex exactly know what it means. But, I mean, you have to trust us on this, and you can also look for these formulas on the internet. Uh, the idea is, is, is if you divide the x velocity by the y velocity, you get the triangle angle of the, of, the, of the angle. And if you, um, um, well, add the square of the both uh, values, you get exactly the size of the speed, uh, which is our velocity, the parameter of the velocity. It's just simple math. I'm sure all of you will and innovate very quickly if you don't know it already. Okay, so let, now let's try maybe to confine the circles within the screen. So maybe let's, yeah. you know, instead of letting them go out of the screen, we can make them stay. Let them make them bounce on the side. Exactly. So, let's say that when, let's use the position event again. So before our object leaves the screen, from the left or right, We want to reverse its speed. Actually, we don't really want to reverse. We just want to set the horizontal speed. So the horizontal speed is the x spin. And we just put the minus from of our x speed property, which is an automatic property generated for each object. And we just duplicate something really similar. Before we leave the top or bottom of the screen, we just invert our white screen. Okay, just a bit finicky right now. Okay. You can 
can't see, they bounce off the walls, and just stay confined with that screen. Okay, this is really pretty. Okay, so, I mean, we have created uh, something that, you know, I think that we can use. I mean, I would do a few changes and then go to the next stage. Maybe we can, I, I would like them to collide somewhere, somehow, so I would like to, Okay, no, that's a, that's a kind of a side end. Wait, we can have the bounding box the collision. Yeah. Okay, no, so that, that's fine. I mean, that's what, what, what I meant. I'm just going to work a little bit on the kind of side end themselves, so they would be a little bit, like, closer to the size. Now, I would like you to notice that currently we're using canvas items, and if we want to use um, a precise collision, this can be done. Um, this can be done. Uh, it, it is recommended to avoid precise uh, pixel level collision. But just for the sake of uh, experimenting, we can do it right now and then leave the experiment, uh, experimenting uh, the optimization stage to a later stage of developing the game. So let's magnify this again. Let's say to 600. Just find this. Okay, so what do you don't, what the, that said, that there's an, a very easy trick that uh, you can learn uh, from, uh, uh, from physics uh, high school lessons, and that is that if we have a, a different, uh, let's say, circles that have an equal mass and they collide, all you have to do in, in order to make it look very realistic is to switch their speeds. So, since we want the on want the, to have you know different uh, circles with the same mass to collide, we are going to apply it only to the orange circle. All right. So we are going to add a little bit of logic, not to the capability, but to the orange circle sprite. So we are actually extending the logic of the basic uh, capability that we have inherited from. As you can see, I just deleted the logic from the circle capability and just moving to the sprite and adding the logic. So, when we collide with, let's say, we can choose a black circle, a orange circle, or any circle. So, let's do it with an orange circle, circle just for the sake of uh, All right. keeping everything very realistic. So, <laughs> when orange circles collide on the bounding box level, we want to do stuff. So, now, we only, the only thing that we want to do is to switch the velocity of the colliding ball with the colliding ball. See, we want to, let's add a few properties so we can save temporary values in it. Let's, let's go with other spin and other spin. As you can see, these are my properties. These are properties unique to the orange circle, and these are inherited or received from our circle capability, as you can see in this little header. You know what, I, I've changed my mind. Let's do let's that the orange uh, uh, circle will collide only with black circle. Okay. Very simple. We just choose a different type of collide. Cool. So, when we have uh, an orange circle colliding with a black circle, we want our speed to have the speed of the black circle, and this black circle to have our speed. Let's do it. First, we want to save our speed. And another one. Okay, so y speed is saved for y speed and x speed is saved for x speed. And we just want to set speed of not ourselves but the other. The other means the one we collided with. It's a special reference which is available only on special events such as collision events. It really comes in handy when we are dealing with a collision event. So you always have, want to have an effect both on you and on the other object. 
So the other event will have our spin. And let's see at the bottom, because the ordering is important. The first actions will be performed first, and the later actions will be performed later. And our cell will have a just need to change this cell to other, which is a known variable, the other one. So other here refers to the, obviously to the object that we are colliding with the black circle. So let's see it happen. Let's see what happens. I'm curious myself. You can see they collide sometimes and they change speeds. Do they? They do. I'm not sure, by the way. Actually, I, th I think they don't. Let's let's debug. Let's see what happens. So I'm going here, and I see that the, we are first storing, first storing the other speed in the other variable. That's y speed, and that's x speed. And then, and we set a speed of the other to x speed. And the other to 16, except oh. for y speed. That's the thing. We just overwrote the speed, so we just have yeah. to put the put one with the variable. Same. Yeah. Okay. Let's put it here. I didn't notice it. Yeah. So other x speed and just speed up. Okay. And let's, let's uh, have let's a look. It. Okay. Okay, you can see them colliding and sometimes just bouncing off each other. As nice. You can see, see it's really hard. Then let me do something. Let me try something. So it's that bit here. Okay. Now as you can see, what's nice to see is that the black uh, circles only collide with the orange circle. But if the orange circles collide with the orange ones, they just uh, pass each other. So this is what we achieve by expanding the basic inheritance capability. And you know, obviously, this can go on and on and on. This is uh, basically only the starting point of the game. But what's nice about the studio is that you can do things and model them quite fast. So I think at that point, at this point, we can, uh, we can uh, answer some questions. So, so this one is referred to you, but uh, I can take it too. So, uh, referring to the commands such as self.speed, is there somewhere I can find a collection of those commands that I can use? Um, so the answer is yes. Uh, first of all, um, there, are, there is a, a pool of resources you can use starting from the website into the studio and uh, also the webinars that we have. So, uh, first of all, I want to just show a little something. We do have an autocomplete function by using control and space together, which will just open the all available indicators or va automatic variables which are available to you at this point. Okay, so first of all, you can, uh, as in every other uh, development environment, you can press on control space. You can also press on F1, that leads you to the help. We have in the studio a contextual help. So when, wherever you, pro, you open the, the help uh, document in the studio, it's going to show you uh, something that is relevant to what you're doing right now. So for instance, I was uh, focusing on the set speed XY action, and therefore when I click on F1, it opened the set speed XY action uh, help section. Um, and you can also search here for indicators, and by doing that, you can you can find the self and the other and everything else that there is in the studio. Um, so I hope this answers your questions. Uh, in addition to that, you can also use our phone. You can uh, go to our webinars. You can go to our autos in the, the Mominis uh, website. I think I hope that there is enough information. If you look for something specific that you think you cannot find, just shoot us an email uh, or write it in the form, and we are obligated to answer in 20, 24 hours. So I think I hope this is 
that's enough for you. Um, let's go on to the next question. Um, okay. So another question we actually hear that all the time is how can I get the um, um, game to my device? Um, so I, we, that's another feature we have on the website. And so let me just open it right here and go to gamecastcontest.com. So this is the gamecastcontest.com. And as you can say, as you can see, you can register to the contest. You can also go to go to get your mobile. <clears throat> and I have to log in in order to use that. That's the, when I type my password, you're not allowed to look. Now. So this is the Get to Mobile uh, dashboard. And I can see all the uh, products that I have running currently. I'm not uh, working on a game for the contest myself. I have, I have only one product that is called First Project. Um, so I'm going to follow the um, directions on how to get your product in dashboard from the beginning. But first of all, once you have it here, uh, you can compile your game if you have uploaded a new version. And you can also download the APK of the file. And once I click on this file, I just uh, download the last compilation that I did. And the Get to Mobile provides you more than just simply compiling your game. We also provide you with a storage service. So whenever you use your uh, username to open a project, uh, to get to open the project and get it to your mobile, you can also store the project on our servers. Uh, it, open, it works with an integration to the SVN, uh, Totus SVN, and um, that's a source control uh, software. And if you don't know how to use it, all you have to do is to go to, to get, get to mobile health section right here, and it tells you step by step how to do everything that you need. And so I think the best way to do it is just follow the instructions. And here on the Get to Mobile Help, you can go to the How to. We call How to Create Your First Mobile Game. And the link is broken, so we're going to fix it. But if you go here, usually you can download the PDF that uh, helps you and guide you through the process. So it, it's relatively easy. You just uh, commit your game, and then you can uh, compile it and download it to your mobile device. Okay, so let's go to the other questions I see right here. Okay, so another question. Is it better to create your own sprites or is there a site with free sprites available? Um, so first of all, if you're interested in graphics, we have a, a webinar that might be very relevant for you. It's called, um, let's see right here, uh, Game graphics. graphics. And it takes place on uh, November 19th. And uh, so attending the webinar uh, is Irish, Iris, uh, who is a leading uh, graphic designer. She is extremely talented, and she can also help you to find ways of creating simple graphics yourself, even if you're not uh, uh, graphic designers. And she's also going to cover a few places where you can find graphics that's well prepared for you. So, you know, you, sometimes you don't have to create everything from scratch. Sometimes it's better to use uh, some uh, sprites that are uh, prepared beforehand. Uh, from my experience as a game developer, uh, as a, maybe as a, as a teenager, I can just recommend you searching the web for a free sprites. There are literally thousands of sprites anywhere. You can find the placeholder sprites for your game until you have something better to put in place. And uh, of course, we also have um, how-tos in our website, which have example sprites and capabilities which, we, which you can use and just uh, see how things get done uh, and see solutions to common problems. So just search the web, find great graphics, uh, make sure they're free to use and not copyrighted. And 
just uh, enjoy. Yeah. And by the way, this is one, you know, I have another tip that is not uh, really recommended for the contest because we do look for, um, let's say, originality in the game. But you can go to the, to the resources uh, section in our website um, on it currently. And you, go, you can go to the graphics. And if you go to the page, you can download a graphic library that you can use in our games. Now, pay, pay attention, attention please, that if you use our graphics, you can only use them in Mominis, uh, on Mominis games, games that you create using the Mominis Studio. So you can just go around and create games outside of our platform. But if you do want to create games with us, you are more than willing to use anything that you want. Um, OK, what else? OK, another question about the rights for your games. After I submit the game, uh, be it I win. If, whether I win or not, do I lose ownership rights uh, the moment I submit it? Um, so uh, first of all, uh, you don't. Um, we don't take the rights of your game. We've never intended to do that. You keep the IP rights for your game. So I want to make sure that uh, this mes message uh, goes uh, through clearly. Um, we are a game publisher, so it means that we are only interested in the distribution rights for your game. Um, and um, that, that basically, I also invite you to read the EULA, which is the end user's license agreement. So you can follow through all the different uh, aspects of the agreement uh, of our collaboration. And the thing is that our main goal is to find developers that can create great games, and we can distribute and get the maximum uh, distribution we can for them. Um, so first of all, we have, I know that I'm uh, kind of uh, publishing my webinars here, our webinars here, but uh, I do recommend to join them because they, they might help you answer all the questions that you are looking answers for. And the next one is about cost promotion. In this webinar, we are going to explain I will meet you, uh, what is the secret sauce behind Mumini's uh, cost promotion tools. Uh, what I can assure you is that when your gains are distribute, distributed in our system, you're going to get millions and millions of users. And that's something that is really hard to achieve if you uh, distribute the game by yourself. That being said, we have never forced anyone, nor we are going to in the future to work uh, with us. So uh, it's only a choice. It's only to maximize your revenue. You don't have to do that. Um, so there is a, a question about, uh, specifically about the contest. Um, so for those of you who are running in the contest, um, OK, in the contest, what would be better for game? for a game presentation or innovative idea? I'm trying to, 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 um, to figure out whether I, I understood the, the, um, the question. If, if I have to um, prioritize between having a game that looks good or a game that has a great uh, gameplay, innovative gameplay, I would say that if you have managed to create a gameplay that is completely innovative and was never done before, this is something that sometimes is harder to create just another beautiful game. But I would say in this context, that in this context, not contest, context, um, that it is harder to achieve. I mean, for, a, for those of you that have, that have a graphic designers that are very qualified and uh, can create beautiful graphics. It's easier to, to, to take a core gameplay that works, improve it just a bit, and wrap it up with a beautiful graphics. A graphic. Uh, to innovate a core gameplay that is you know, something that was never done before, if you manage to do something that works well, this is great. But sometimes, um, let's say, you don't nail it, and it can be just a bit risky. Uh, we have another question. Does the studio have a supported mobile devices list, or the created games supposed to work on any device? Well, the, the beautiful thing about our platform is that it's supposed to work on any Android device. 
we test and we make sure that the games run and play smoothly on a wide range of devices. We have devices and we test from everything from the Galaxy S3 super phone to uh, old HTC and uh, older Android devices with the smaller screens and limited uh, memory. So you can just be sure that uh, you can just develop your game and it will work on any Android device uh, available, which has it's the Google Play Store. Yeah, since, I mean, going uh, back to this question, I mean, since we publish games, we don't uh, only care about whether the, war, the, the game can work across one device, we have to make sure that the game can run across different devices. So all you have to do, to do as developers is to test the game in the simulator, follow the guidelines, and just for, for uh, you know, if you want to have a, a hands-on experience, you can use it get to mobile, but you don't have to test the game on different devices yourself. This is by, done by us and with a very uh, qualified developer that Kevin and our uh, very qualified QA team. QA team, exactly. Um, is there a way to create room with a background that repeats itself over and over again? Um, okay, so yes, if, if you go to the original game of uh, Ninja Chicken, um, you can see that it has kind of uh, this repeating background. Um, in most of the side scroller games, what you have is a background that repeats itself over and over again. So the thing is that in order to do that, you don't use the default background uh, features that we've shown you in the game. What you have to do is to create a game manager that dynamically moves and create the t creates the tiles of the background. Um, and I think this is actually a good idea uh, for a topic we can cover in the more advanced uh, webinars that we're going to have in the future. By the way, uh, everyone, if you have ideas or you know specific features that you want to learn about how to implement them, we can show it to you in the webinar. So just send us uh, your suggestions, and we will make sure to follow them. And also, you can write your specific question in the forums, and we will take them online, offline. <laughs> Great. So, okay, I think uh, this is uh, pretty much it. Uh, it uh, our time is up. Uh, Asaf, thank you very much for uh, uh, joining this webinar and leading it. Thanks. Thanks to our, thanks to our users for uh, staying with us and listening to our webinar. And um, again, going back to the next webinar, the next one is, in is uh, this uh, end of the week. Uh, it's about cross promotion. The next one is about graphics. And you can check them out in the webinar page on our website. Uh, for those of you who are joining the contest, Again, I wish you all good luck. Thank you all for coming, and have a nice rest of the day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys.